Welcome back, boys and girls, to another exciting episode of Full Circle. This is exciting episode number 37. Is it 37? It's 37. Oh, thank God, people, I could not remember. <laughs> oh, for, for numerous reasons. We're but... not this too long, <laughs> too many. <laughs> too many, but yes, we made it to episode 37. Quick shout out, we're still giving away the NES Classic, SNES Classic. Because we already gave it the NS Classic. If you missed it, ha, shame on you. But if we're giving away prizes. Go to Twitter, follow us. Anyway, I'm tired of this intro already. So I'm Odell Harmon. Follow me at Odell Harmon Jr. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, medias. I could have let this introduction go on for minutes more. I was enjoying it thoroughly. Oh, my bad. Jared. Sorry. <laughs> I am Jared Perdette. You can find me at Toon Velo. So we have the exciting episode, as Odell mentioned. We'll be talking about. CES 2019. That just happened. What is it? What came out of it? You might have heard things already. We'll be doing a... All right. By we, I mean, Jared has a quiz thing for me. It's like, you know, kind of funny, kind of intellectual, kind of geeky, which means I'm probably going to fail horribly at it as, it, as he, he makes them too clever for me sometimes. It's going to be great. Play along yeah. at home. Yeah, play, play along. With, yeah. But first and foremost, this week is PAX. And me and Odell are gym leaders with the PAX Pokemon League. Woo! Shout out. So if you're gonna be at PAX South blah, ooh, if you're gonna be at PAX South, South 2019, please come find us. We'll be in cosplay, we'll be in regular clothes at some point, we'll be doing this. We'll be battling. Pokemon. We will. My DS is off screen. I don't feel like reaching for it. Eh. <laughs> but if you're just listening on, the, you know, whatever you listen to podcasts on, I did reach for it. I'm currently holding it. <laughs> it's orange and white. Yeah, we actually got the opposing colors. Uh, not by purpose, just coincidence, actually. I mean, there was, there was only two colors out at the time. <laughs> it's so. true. Uh, right? Like sun and moon. So, um, which, we also, which we also got, right? Like, yeah. I have moon uh, and you have sun. So, if you follow us and we'll be packed, this will be a bonus look ahead. Good for you. To how to prepare to battle us at PAX. If not, you're just going to get to enjoy listening to how we planned our teams. Yes, and if you battle us, you get a nice real gym badge with our, you know, gym design on it. That <laughs> Ding, ding. That I very own Jared for that design, so yay. Woo. But without further ado, what is your team and theme? So Jared? I am Jared, the tea master. Um, those of you who may or may not know, I'm an avid fan of tea, and I actually also really like grass Pokemon. So right, brood leaves, brood leaf badge. That's kind of the theme I'm going for. I'll be, I'll be dressed as a barista of sorts. Okay, so my team breakdown. So this is actually my first time kind of mono-teaming a grass team. Uh, and I started out trying to go to Smogan, Schmogan, Schmoogan, Sh- Smoogly, Smogon. <laughs> uh, and it's a good place to start if you're trying to build your own team. Definitely don't stick to that too because that's not where I went at all at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, if you're new to the competitive balancing, you like to say it's a great place to start. And some of the more popular mons, you know, have like tons of data and uses for them. But you know, some of the less popular ones, they're just like, here's a set that should work. So don't be afraid to experiment, try your own thing. And just because that set works for that particular mon doesn't mean it'll mesh well with your team, which is the most important thing when right. building one. So for example, Smogan highly recommended my cradley be a setup and blocker. It doesn't work that way, not in any capacity. So I have a cradley. It is a massive slow tank. It can heal. It can defend itself. And it's going to be on the field until you faint. <laughs> so that's that's the purpose of my cradley. Now my actual setup Pokemon is going to be Aerocorn. It's going to be great. It's going to throw out hazards and it's going... It doesn't heal as much, but it still packs a little wallop. Contrary, though, I'm bringing back a competitor from my previous Dishonor team, Roserade, as a potential other setup. I like to keep my opponents on their feet. They see them and they know. So actually, even if people are thinking about Smogan, now they're looking at my team, seeing three potential Pokemon that could set up dangerous hazards for them. And I, I like to try and psych. The, it's not just the game. you got to psych out your opponent. I like Roserade just because it goes with your theme really well, too. It, it especially goes with my team. They did not include it in the leader art. Um, it's a little sad. They used to do that. They don't always do it. Uh, that would have been my, like, star Pokemon, right? Like, uh, the art where it's, like, uh, the gem leader, like, with their it, iconic I, Pokemon. I guess, yeah, their main, iconic, most... I don't know what you call it. Their best... I guess... I don't know. 
Mascot. Mascot, yeah, mas- yeah. Right? Lieutenant Surge with Raichu. Uh, Misty with... Starmie? Starmie. Yeah, I was, I was thinking either Starmie or Goldeen, I guess, depending. Yeah. It's the Starmie. It's a Starmie. Brock, Brock with his Onyx. Mm-hmm. Erica with her Vileplume. Sabrina with her Alakazam. <laughs> it's like, wait, did she ever battle Ash? I don't know. <laughs> Blaine with his Magmar. Magmar. And Giovanni with Rhydon. Yeah. Uh, or Persian, depending if he's a Team Rocket or Gym Leader. Yeah. But I got off topic. So those are <laughs> three of my Pokemon. Uh, but now that's... And they basically kind of run my setup kind of... You no, know, not defense. Defense is also... I have Venusaur. I'll go and give you this hint. It's my Mega. Because nothing helps a grass Pokemon more than having... Im- uh, not immunity. Reduced weakness to ice and fire. Yeah, it's... Thick fat. It almost gives it almost a good... Well, it still has poison, but other than that... I mean, not poison. It still has psychic, but... Other than that, like, it almost... It takes out two of his major weaknesses. It's really, really helpful. Just good old neutral hit. Right? So last but not least, my big old fighters here um, will be Serena with Queenly Majesty. I do not like priority moves being used against me, but you know I use them. (laughs) Um, And, okay, so I won't tell you which exactly specifically, but she definitely has a Z move. So look into the lore a little bit. Find out what cheeky little Z move I might use there. Uh, and last but not least, I have a Tactician Breloom. So all the low moves that people normally ignore, 60, get bumped right up. Uh, repetitive moves, healing moves, coming for you. All right, all right. Well, this year, I had a theme in mind, but it was kind of weak. I can admit that. What was your first theme? I don't know, something about power. Some 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 Kachan thing, I think. Oh, yeah! Because yeah. we were going to... Yeah, okay. Kachan and then all the uh, explosive Pokemon, just like Electrode or Arcanine. Something like Something that. Something like that. But that's not the theme. Your theme is... Yeah, I got asked to be the bug gym leader. And I was like, cool, I'll go as a Miles Morales cosplay. I can kill two birds with one stone. So I'm going to have an amazing Miles Morales cosplay exclusive. Heard it here first. It's, not a lot of people know. It's fantastic. <laughs> And I will be the bug type gym leader. I've never actually ran a bug team, so this is my first time. Uh, for those who know, I've ran many fire teams, so I had to bring my all star Volcarona to the mix. Why not? Obvious choice. One right. of my best Pokemon I've ever trained. Mm-hmm. I love it. I also got a Scolipede, a hidden ability Scolipede. If you don't know what it is, you should look it up. And it's, it's a very. I like Scolipede because it's one of those Pokemon that's deceptively bulky. You don't expect it to be on paper. Nothing says it really is. Typing-wise, you're like, it has the standard array of weaknesses. But boy, oh boy, can it take a hit. Right? Like, you hit it, and it doesn't go below 50. And you know that you're in trouble. You're like, oh boy. I don't have many more turns to try and take this down. Yeah, so I will say this. If you're battling me, if my Scolipede gets off a Swords Dance, you better hope and pray it's on its way out the door. It's done. You better have chip damage on it, recurring damage on it. It needs it. So I will also be rocking a Mega Pinsir, which I never did before. Like, I... You know, I really wasn't a fan of Mega Pokemon that went back to, like, you know, the Pidgeots and the Pinsir. So, but Mega Pinsir really meshes well with this team. He gets a, you know, flying stab and normal moves become flying. He has quick attack. He, that, that's, his, that's his claim to fame. <laughs> he Mega Evolves, and he has a priority move that's, like, above 80. That's all that's you really a, need. Unless you're facing Queenly Majesty. Oh, then, then uh, yeah. Yeah, but she doesn't handle she doesn't handle him well. We did test battling. I have to brag for you, uh, both your Scolipede and uh, Pinsir are natural shinies. Yes, that they are. They weren't hacked. No, no funny business was naturally breeding. Got a shiny Scolipede and a shiny Pinsir. So bravo, bravo to you for that. Thank you, thank you. Yes. I will also be... So this is the Bug Electric Spider. I say... Garventula. Garvantula. It is Garvantula. I'm pretty sure like it is. Like a tarantula. It makes sense. But Garventula sounds cool. <laughs> so I have a Garvantula. And it's, if you've ever battled Pokemon, it does what Garvantulas do. That's this whole shtick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Aberdurant, which is a very good Pokemon. Weren't they a band in the 80s? Durant Durant. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> 
So Duran Duran disbanded, and then one of the members came back, and he formed Duran. So it's just one of them. Just one of the members. Yeah, just one of the members. <laughs> and then he became a bug still Pokemon. Complicated, but stay with us. Stay with us. He's really good. He has this ability where he ups his power tremendously at the cost of accuracy. I threw in a sculpt lens to offset a bit. And, you know, it really, it, that upped boost in the pure attacking power goes a long way. If it can hit, land a hit. Right. Which, through some testing, because remember when we first tested, I lost, like, I think two battles because it just could Legit. not land a hit Power's at no very good crucial moments. It was. But you came back. The, we, we refined it, and we, we were ready to battle now. Yes. And, wait, hold on And you set up Pokemon. Oh. And I have a Shuckle. Is that six, or am I at five? No, that, that's a six. Okay. And Shuckle, he won it. He cannot be one hit KO'd. You just can't do it. He, he, he His defenses are too high. And he's just completely set up. He sets up. And if he sets up everything. <laughs> he sets up for days. He sets. And his, his claim to fame is that he's going to set up what he needs, to, what needs him to set up. And he can maybe take out a Pokemon. If not, maybe horribly injure a Pokemon. It is a-okay in a six-party six, uh, team to have one entirely dedicated setup. Because they that just sets up everything <laughs> else to go to go down. Especially my Shuckle, because he has a very special string of setups that just really hinders a team. Just wrecked my team. I was like, yes. well, I'm not faster than you anymore. I'm taking chip damage. I just don't know if I'll last... Yeah, so those are our teams. Grass, Bug, we'll be the gym leaders, we'll be in cosplay. So if you're at PAX South, come say hi. You know, we'll shake hands, we'll take some photos, we'll shout you out on social media, you know. Yeah, so it'll be fun, people. Speaking of fun. Oh, God. Yes. So, okay, confession, I am a huge fan of the NPR show Ask Me Another, which has nerdy word games. Uh, about things. So this is my own take on a word game. I'm calling it any mistakes instead of any may. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I told Jerry we can do this. We're doing it. So I'll get better if we if you like it and we if you like it. All right. So if y'all like this, please comment again. You know, we're, we're taking a stab from P, uh, NPR. It's a word game that we're gonna play that you also play at home. We'll have fun. Hopefully, I don't make a fool out of myself. So, all right, let's do this. Right. So we, you know, people. We've always had those friends. You try and introduce them to anime, and they just can't get the name pronounced correctly. Uh, they they bumble it in some way. So um, I'll give an example here. The answer will always be a fusion of the correct anime name, which will always come first, and the bumbled word at the end. Okay. So, for example. After learning that he is from another planet, a warrior and his friends are prompted to defend it from several round objects that are made from a variety of materials and used across sports and engineering. And the answer you would give there would be Dragon Balls. Because the anime would be called Dragon Ball Z, but people often mistake it for Dragon Balls. Okay. Does this make sense? This makes sense. Okay. I don't know how good I am going to be at this, but all right. Okay, okay. But okay. right. well, that's the fun part. That's fun, watching, watching. Okay. <laughs> okay. A waitress rescues two swordsmen and demands they help her find her hair care product originating from an Indian subcontinent. Samurai shampoo. Yes. Oh! <laughs> there we go. We got it. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I, oh. <laughs> See? It's fun. Okay. Okay. All right. After being given a mysterious power, an outcast prince becomes a mass leader of a rebellion against a colorless petroleum-derived flammable liquid that's used primarily as fuel. Tell us what you're thinking. Lelouch of the... Okay, you're on the right track. <laughs> Petroleum? No, no, no. Okay, what, what's... Wait, 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 wait give, read this again. Okay. After being given a mysterious power, an outcast prince becomes the mass leader of a rebellion against a colorless petroleum-derived flammable liquid. All right. Colorless flammable liquid. Well, okay. It, 
You, you can think of it as colored. Okay. A black liquid. Lelouch of the... <laughs> Wait, hold on. You got the character, but what's the anime series? I mean, Lelouch of the Rebellion is the correct answer, right? Of the anime no, what's there's the series is called though. Oh wait, the series is called Lucia the Rebellion. Uh, there's a there's a there's a four part. Oh, oh 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 oh. Wait, hold on. Uh huh. Okay. Code. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh crap! Wait, crap, crap. Whoa, one more time. One more time. Okay. One more time. Hey, I'll just say the last part since you okay. got that. Okay, right. A rebellion against a petroleum-based liquid used as fuel. Code of the gases? Code gas instead code. of code geos. Oh, code gas. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, right. All right. Okay, this one This one you'll think is probably pretty funny. Okay. Uh, a young boy aspires to become just like his father while on a quest uh, with his friends to find him. His father is known to have retired from his job as pursuing and killing animals. I'm not going to lie to you. I completely blanked out halfway <laughs> on your <laughs> Like, I, like, I started thinking about something else inside. <laughs> I was just like, Lala, oh, crap, Jared's Wait, we're speaking. doing something. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'm okay. here. <laughs> a young boy, a young boy aspires to become just like his father while on a quest with his friends to find him. His father is known to have retired from his job of pursuing and killing animals. Is it Pokemans? No. Okay, okay, thank God. Oh, it's gonna be bad. Okay, young boy. Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> Hunter x Hunter. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hunter x Hunter instead of Hunter Hunter. Okay, this one you should get right away. Be okay. Follow following the adventures of a ten year old boy and his animal like companions. Pokemon. Yeah, he strives to grow into a fully formed adult. <laughs> Pokemon. Uh, okay. if, uh, first of all, sorry. <laughs> if you say Pokemon, I instantly hate you. You know it's not Pokemon. You the theme song repeats the word Pokemon. 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 It, not only does it repeat it, it repeats it slowly. Pokemon, like an harmonic key. Maybe they just think it's a Jamaican anime. <laughs> Come on, you Pokemon. Even they would say mon. Yeah, but then that's just an accent. Like, hey, hey, mon. No, okay. No. I mean, even I, if it was, they're still saying it correctly. No, they have selective Jamaican accents. <laughs> okay, okay. This one might be a little harder. Okay. I'd, mostly because I'm not sure you've seen the anime. I'm tick for tack, so I'm feeling good about myself. Okay. Tired of his mundane life, our main protagonist moves to Tokyo at the bequest at his friend's invitation. There he finds uh, invisible gangs, mythical beings, and this phonetic animal sound. At his friend's request, he moves to Tokyo because uh-huh. he's bored with his life. Yeah. Do you know this anime? That part's true, right? That part's yes. Yep. Okay. That's just that's just describing the anime. And then all right, well all right, second part. So then he there he finds this phonetic animal sound. Okay, what what are what are some animal sounds? Things that like things that like a dinosaur would make. Roar. Okay. Do you know the anime now? <laughs> there are lots of main characters with an interwoven tail. Can I phone a friend? Sure. <laughs> Hello, Jared. Hey, Odell. What's up? Hey, I'm, I'm on this game show made by this you. <laughs> wow, love that guy. Yeah. And he and he's telling me an anime. I didn't know the, just the name, okay, or a part of the name of this anime where some guy moves to Tokyo with his friend because he's bored with life. Uh huh. And, and apparently there's invisible gangs. Uh-huh. And, and and what else? What, what else? Hold on, let me, let me ask the host. Okay. Excuse me, host. What, what, what was the thing? There are invisible gangs, mythical beings, and phonetic animal sounds. Uh, there's invisible gangs, mythical beings, and 
phonetic animal sounds. Okay, Does well, it sound I, like anything you ever see? Well, I'm not sure about the last part, but the first part sounds like the anime Durarar. Oh, okay. Is that, is that right. what you're looking for? Maybe. maybe, maybe. I, I'll see. Thanks. Thanks. I, I got to go. They're, they're telling me my time's up. Okay. Bye. Click. Okay. My friend said it sounds like Durarar. Okay. Okay. Durarar. So put them together now. Durarar. Durarar. <laughs> Yeah, no one can pronounce it. So it just looks like drrr on screen. I, I just I, I always just said they should call it the Headless Horseman anime. Basic, yeah, that that's it. Okay, uh, maybe maybe we can try for one more. All right. Okay. All right. A teenage boy finds himself recruited as a member of an elite team of pilots by his father, destined to fight for a worldwide transdenominational movement with Protestant Christianity. Oh crap! Uh, this is a. Uh, oh crap! Oh, uh, damn it! I know, I know the anime, uh, which I, which I completely just forgot the name. Wait, okay. Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're like right there. Okay. Neon. Uh huh. Evangelical. Basically, right? Okay, I'll give it to you. Right. The answer would be Neon Genesis Evangelical <laughs> instead of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, there, there's, you, there's so many. I can see it in your eye. You're just like, <laughs> yeah, just some version of this. So, yeah, that's, uh, I had one more, but eh, All right. it's not as good. All right, I'm not going to lie, uh -huh. Jared, to you and to the people out there, that, that was a lot better than I initially thought it was. Yes. It, it really was. Okay. I honestly didn't think I was going to be able to get any of them, <laughs> but uh, I completely jumped on the Hunter Hunter thing, and like, I just felt... I just knew in my heart Pokemon was going to be in there. Right? It has to be. It has to be, right? Everyone mispronounces it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so maybe that could be a future topic. Yeah, yeah. So if you like the game, let us know. And I don't know, maybe I guess we can do more. Certainly. All right. So speaking of games you may or may not like, CES happened. And if you don't know what CES is, it's a tech convention. Mm-hmm. Lots of things happen. Jerry, what does CES stand for? Well, actually, its official name is just CES now. Oh. But I know. I looked it up. Oh, right. well. I don't know. It used to be known as the Consumer Electronics Show. These are all the good all the good things coming to you. These are watches, TVs, digital assistants, cars, basically everything you need to run your smart life, market it to you. So here are our favorite things from CES. Wait, so... CES is no longer an acronym. Like, it doesn't stand for anything. Nope, it's, it's just... Its name is now CES. Which is not an acronym standing for anything. Technically, no. Just <laughs> like a, like the train. CSX used to stand for Chessie Seaboard Merger, but it no longer... It just means CSX now. Well, that's stupid. Well, I mean, I didn't make it. Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> anyway. CES. <laughs> CES. Here is our favorite tech that premiered at the show. I'll start off. Okay. So one of my favorite pieces of text is TVs. I mean, we all look at it. They're fun. We need them bigger and better. And that's what we got. So Samsung came out with a QLED 95, 98 inch, excuse me, 98 inch that some people are dubbing the wall. I don't know if they're calling it the wall or people calling it the wall. Point is, all it's... All in all, it's just... Uh... Another TV on the wall. Led I, Zeppelin, I, brick in the wall. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I don't actually, I've never actually listened to Led Zeppelin. You've never rocked and or rolled? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that, I, I really... <laughs> no, okay. no, no, I have not. Okay. People, give me, give me rock songs so I can... I can I can fix this injustice. Yes. <laughs> but it's as big as a wall. It's 98 inches. It's like if I was rich and you know, I had like a swanky little penthouse mm -hmm. upscale apartment, I would completely put this on the wall and just No, so more impressive than its size because honestly it's just a big TV. That that that's all it is. Right. It's not innovative, it's just big. The bigger it is, you just have to sit further away from it. Like you're you there's going to be a fixed eye to vision ratio at some point. Yeah, but it has this thing since it's so big and can't really be moved. It has a ca a single cable connected to the TV that then leads to a box or panel or whatever in which you plug in all your devices to. That's revolutionary. Right. All TVs should just have that. It just makes sense. 
it just it, instead of running cables behind it and trying to uh, shuffle like oh there's one cable to the TV I can put this box wherever it held it needs to go and then just plug and play yeah that, so much easier yeah so yeah but but even more impressive LG has invented a rolled up TV it I mean it, it, it sits in the box you'll see pictures gifts whatever here so you mm-hmm. can visually see it for those watching those listening look it up it's the uh, LG what is it rolled up TV is actual like what they refer to it as? I did not write down the actual name. Oh no. Yeah. Foldomat. Foldomat. No, that's no that, Oh, that's, no, that's something the... more exciting. We'll get to that. <laughs> no, okay. I did yeah, I did I think it's just called the rolled up point is it comes out of a box and it goes it literally rolls out. You can't see it like actually rolling the box is not clear, but it literally folds out and then it has a mode where it comes out like a fourth of one fourth of the way or something and it becomes like a little Media bar, it puts like the weather and stuff. Yeah. Point is, I think that's just super cool because not that of itself just cool, but the future of what we can do with rolled up TVs, like how more exciting and animated they'll get. That I, I don't know. I'm, I'm geeking out. Right. No, definitely dynamic tech is going to have a large impact on our future. I think. Yeah, like especially, I'm just amazed when it's like, it's not about what we can't do. I mean, we could probably do anything at this point. But once it's functional, that, that's the real, you know. It's only 65 inches. I say that like that's not big, but 65, uh, uh, 65 inches is a great size. I mean, it's bigger than the current TV in my living room. So Right? Okay, so some of the things, some of my things will sound kind of boring. <laughs> but I just admitted to listen to NPR, so is, it that, is that that shocking? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, some people like, you know, a nice... Uh, Array of cheeses. Oh, cheeses are good. <laughs> and, you know, and some people like me just want, like, you know, a beautiful burger with crazy things on it. They, they both have their, their time and place in our world. Yes. Okay, so there's one thing. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, it's called the Solar Cow Project. Okay. Right? Okay, this is for peoples in, like, remote areas. Mm-hmm. It has a station with a solar panel on it with charging things. So you can bring these, like, little bottle-shaped external batteries and plug them in and get power for like several days and then unplug it and take it back to wherever you live. Like so you can like milk the solar panel. It looks like a cow. I think it's neat. I think bringing, again, bringing technology to, bringing no, practical purposes. No, that just the, the fact that it actually looks like a cow just took it to a well, No, no, it's not, it's not shaped like a porcelain cow, but when you see all the bottles plugged in, it looks like, you know, oh, like, like udders. Okay, okay, no, I thought like they, they, they made, they visually made the solar panel like a cow and then you were taking it off. Like, I was like, that's just <laughs> funny. No, okay. Uh, let's see. Other thing, several, uh, several people are updating smartwatches. So I don't have a smartwatch. I have, I got a boring regular watch. Oh, look at me! Right, poor I, me, <laughs> living in the Stone Age. I thus far find them kind of impractical, uh, but both Withings and uh, Heartbit have come have now developed watches with ECG monitoring uh, capabilities. So, right, instead of just monitoring your heart rate flat out like most smart watches do, this can actually tell you your heart health. Probably the more important thing than bragging to all your coworkers that you got. 5,000 steps today, which has no indication of, was that a tough 5,000 steps? Did you just happen to fidget a lot? You, you know, steps and pedometers don't mean anything. I, I've never been, I mean, if you're one of those people, kudos to you. But I've never been impressed by someone's like, I've taken X amount of steps today. I'm just like, that's cool, I guess. I mean, I've breathed a lot, too. I'm like, <laughs> it's not or, a feat of a uh, human athleticism. <laughs> and also, it's like over time, it's like okay, if I walk twelve thousand steps today and then proceed to walk like a hundred the rest of the week, I mean, what good have I done myself? Not much. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll into a next one for my for me if you don't mind. All right. Uh, it's also the Chrono Life vest, which is then taking it a step further. It's the whole vest that wraps around you to monitor more things like a, uh, EKG, uh, oxygen levels. Um, to try and help prevent future medical emergencies. Like, it can sense if a heart attack is coming. Mm. Uh, right? So I'm like, that would that even if it seems more appealing to me. And I can see this technology going further, where, like, if it knows, it could even be equipped like an external pacemaker. Mm. Uh, so you don't have to have that surgery, right? It can probably just stimulate you. Oh, my God, I just had a revelation. You could also do this, use the same technology to help Parkinson's people, right? You can apply a slow uh, electrical current to help st- uh, s- Stabilize the shaking. Anyway, I just I just had that those thoughts. I don't know. Patent pending. 
I don't know. Uh, what, put Trademark. The, yeah, there stamp, you go. Copyright. Yeah, just just do all of that. Logo. <laughs> Save this episode, people. Episode is 37. Seven. Yeah. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you so bad. Okay, okay. All right, so one of my other pieces of text, if I can borrow the notes here. Yes. Thank you, sir. It's a car. It's a car that drives itself. Ooh. I need to write down the car. Oh, God. <laughs> but you well, see, you didn't even need the notes. It had a complicated name. No, it's the, uh, no. Mercedes Benz. Urban Ethics. That was something before Urban Ethics. Vision. Vision Urban Ethics. The Mercedes Benz Vision Urban Ethics. We don't need no notes. I mean, we probably, probably, probably need, need them. He, he, there, there you go. Thank you. Jared, okay. <laughs> it was the Mercedes-Benz Vision Urbanetics, which is a self-driving car, but it doesn't have a driver, but you can customize the inner cabin. It's still in the concept phase, so it's not going to be releasing, you know, this year or maybe not even next year. Mm-hmm. So if you played the game, if you played the game Detroit Become Human, that thing where the people, the driver and the passenger can turn around the car seats and face the passenger seats in the rear, and it becomes like, you know, a nice lounge in the car where everyone's facing each other and they can discuss and do things. So this car is built like that. You can customize it like you can have, like, a little table, and everyone could be sitting in a lounge, like, type setting in the car. Like, me and Jared could be facing each other along oh, with oh. our passengers. And we're like, blah, welcome, blah, blah. Yeah, welcome, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Isn't it fun being rich? Oh, look at the poor people, honey. Look at them driving <laughs> themselves. <laughs> what yeah. plebes. Yeah, you could do something like that. And uh, but more importantly than that, just being really cool, it looks really cool. It looks futuristic, and not like corny futuristic. Like oh man, they're just really reaching. You know, it also had a really nice futuristic vibe to it. Um, I robot right the the cars in those like okay, these are the future, but these don't look stupid. Yeah, so it has a nice cool design. It definitely looks like <laughs> which I think was also a Mercedes. Oh well, all right, Mercedes Benz. <laughs> we see we see you. So, yeah, look up the Mercedes-Benz Vision Urban Urbanetics, Edix, which is here. You can look at the cool design and the pinks and purples and the the hues hues and the weird window shape thing going on. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool. It's like a rave in a car. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Sure. <laughs> the future is now. Yes. Yeah, speaking of the future. No, I'll, I'll save that for you again. Okay, so mine will seem boring by comparison again. But they have the Ori phone ring, right? So we can finally do... The, uh, I know, Dell thinks it's so boring, but it's just so neat, right? It's like your phone is, all, you wear it as a ring, and you can, like, talk into it and hear things like like this, right? Yeah, I mean, you're cool. You can actually I, you hear. You know what? I, I want them. I want them. They have to. Yes! They need to make a thumb ring. I just want to be. Hello? Hello, I operator. Just, I really, really, I don't want to be a douche. I just, I can't wait to, like, there's the douche guy where it's like, look. But I'm actually on the phone, Jerry. Look at me. Look, look. I, I'm making the figure. Conference call. Hello, hello. It's like, it's like, hold on. Someone's hitting me on my other line. <laughs> right? See, it's it would be great. I want it. I want it out. That's it. I'm so, I'm so. Yes. So another thing I think will be boring for me, my kind of person, is the full mouse tooth two. Full mouth toothbrush. It's like a night guard. You just jam it in and brush all your teeth at once. That's pretty exciting. Honestly, yeah. Like I'm not gonna lie, brushing your teeth is just work. It's just that's one. That's the part of my morning routine that I hate the most. Yes. Correction. I, I I brush my teeth, people. It's you, just you, you didn't say you didn't do it. You just said you hate it. Yeah. So it would be cool if I can. I'm I'm not gonna lie. That's one of those things where it's like, do I need an invention to make that part of my morning easier? Yes. Yes. If I can just wake up. Like you can even get some Z's just ding. All right, cool. Speaking of life being easier, I'll give this last one to you. All right, it's the foldy mate, fold the mate, fold eye mate. Who who knows how to pronounce things nowadays? Yeah. But we finally have it, people. We've been promised. We've had version of work. It folds your clothes. Per it's you know data, it can fold up to twenty five items. And five minutes or less. Mind blowing. So that means I don't know how many clothes you have, but twenty five items is considerable is a considerable amount. Right? So I mean what? So you can roll you can approximately take care of fifty items in ten minutes. 
you know, approximately 75 items in 15 minutes. Point is, it's going to fold your clothes so you don't have to. And so satisfying. We're, we're just going to... Finally. Yeah. Finally, it's here. We're, we're in a new era. Uh, golden Dawn. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It really is. We, we full circle back to One Piece from last week, but thank Golden Dawn reference. But, I mean, I would pay for that. I don't have a problem washing clothes. I really don't. No. Nope. Because the machine does it. You right. just, just kind of... But taking them out the dryer, that's where things get a little tricky. Mm. Mm. Nope. The collar and, sh- and sleeves are even, but the bottom is not. Hmm. Tedious. And you're like, but I hang my clothes up. Who cares if they're folded? Who gives the free? Oh, right? No. For, that'd be preferable. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much it, I think. So we got, you know, TVs, cars, and making our lives a lot easier by being lazy. I mean, what else is technology supposed to be used for? Nothing. Exactly. Okay, so thanks again for joining us. Uh, as always, I am Jared Verdette at Toon Velo. And I'm Odo Harmon at Odo Harmon Jr. We thank you for rocking with us, and we'll see you next week, everybody. Hope to see y'all at PAX.